that we are in a season which is very different from the others. Yes? We are in a unique season. We are in a season where we are going to experience God more personal than any other time. Amen. So ever since the time I came here, God has been putting this thought in my heart. And when uh, I knew that I have to preach uh, on 4th of October, everything got just so aligned with uh, what I wanted to speak this morning. Amen. I remember uh, traveling from Delhi to Bangalore, sitting in the flight. I was thinking, when should I book my ticket back? And I remember the Holy Spirit telling me, I will tell you when to book. Okay. You don't have to specifically choose a date. And once I came here, I came with the desire that I'm going to just take some time to, you know, just fast, just take some time to just relax and experience God. When I came down here, it's amazing what is happening here. Amen. How many are excited for this season? Are you excited that God is going to do something new in your life? Amen. I don't know about you, but God is going to speak something very unique, something very special that is very important for you in this season. And I want to start with something amazing. You know, a few weeks ago, few of the men from our church, we went to this... Uh, uh, what is that? Secretly. Okay. So a few of the men from our church, we went to this place, which was about four, uh, four hours, right? About four hours away from Bangalore. And uh, we just wanted to have fun. Uh, all the men, once we reached there, we were all like boys. You know, we wanted to just have fun and things like that. It was an amazing experience. The moment we reached there, we just saw this amazing place. You know, this beautiful green hills. And beautiful, this valley full of green. There was this waterfalls and all of these things. We did some real amazing things over there. You know, we just, we just got reminded of our childhood playing cricket and all of those things with all these grown up men. And it was an amazing time. And on the last day, we did something this, you know, something like this. We wanted to, we wanted to do this trekking up one of these hills that was there. And as we were trekking up uh, this hill, we reached on top most part of the hill. It took us about 40 minutes. If I'm not wrong, the boys know it. It took us about 40 minutes or something. And once we reached on the topmost part of the hill, you know, I just began to observe. We all began to observe, actually. It was quite beautiful. Uh, we must say that, you know, uh, those, everything will start looking so small once you are up there. You know, when you just look around the small paddy field, the small houses and those surrounding green trees and all of those things. And, and there are times you just observe and God will start speaking to you, right? Have you come across times like that? You just observe certain things and God will tell you, hey, there is something that I want to speak to you about. And something that I observed and something that God put in my heart was I saw this really tall, strong trees, okay, right on top of the hill. Really beautiful, really strong and really healthy looking trees. And I just observed and I just realized that, man, the, the fact that we are breathing fresh air is because of these really tall, beautiful trees. I know what fresh air is because I come from a place we don't have good fresh air, all right? <laughs> you know about Delhi, right? So. There was fresh air, there was so much beauty that gr this, these green trees were adding, right? And there was so much shade and all of these things. And I just realized for a moment, like, you know, none of these trees just showed up in that place, just like that. Do you think any of those trees just showed up in that place just like that? Matter of a second, boom, here is the trees. It didn't come uh, in that place like that. If you ask the tree, the tree will tell you, I had to go through seasons in my life where I was nothing. There was a time I was nothing but a seed and I thought I was buried. This is it. My life is done. Right? But moments later, it realized that there is life in me. Right? You know, that little tiny shoot just came out and then it had to stay consistent in the same place for years and years together. and. Even then, it was still unnoticed. Was it noticed? 
No, it was still a little plant or a little tree, right? And it had to go through all kind of seasons in its life. This is what God was speaking to me, right? It had to go through all kind of seasons from summer, be it winter, monsoon and autumn and all kind of seasons it had to go through. And then these storms, the fact that it is on top of a hill, do you know that there are landslides? right there are all kind of storms by the way we were up there on the hill uh, you have no idea the the kind of wind that was you know blowing at us you know it is a dangerous place and if you ask the tree the tree will tell you man it's been a heck of a journey but i tell you the fact that i'm alive the fact that i'm here in this place planted in the same place is because i was in the same place hidden for a long time amen you know the if you want to be exposed i mean if you want your beauty to be exposed you know what you have to do you need to stay hidden in the same place for as long as god tells you that this is your assignment that this is how long you need to stay hidden in that same place how many of you want your beauty to be exposed and let how many of you want the world to see your beauty i'm talking about not just your outer beauty but i believe there is beauty that god has put inside your spirit you know there is authority that god has put inside your spirit there is glory that god has put inside of your spirit amen you know when you read book of uh, when you read the epistle of uh, uh, ephesians you get to see the amount of spiritual gifts that lord has put inside a believer If you want to bring all this authority all this glory out of you what do you have to do you have to stay hidden in this place amen so tell your neighbor if you want your beauty to come out you need to stay hidden so the title that i want to preach today is my hiding place tell your neighbor my hiding place amen this is a season where god is calling each one of us to hide in his presence amen have you been tuning into our uh, bishop of revived nations uh, uh, you know those streams that he does have you been tuning into that and he says something like is amazing that this is a season where you're just going to hide in his presence where you're going to just tune into the presence of god a month of just fasting and worshiping a month of just seeking the presence of god amen when we hide god is going to bring the best out of you in this season so how many of you are ready that ready to hide in this season you know throughout the bible you get to see people hiding in the presence of presence of god but there are also places where you see people hiding away from the presence of god do you know that the very first book in the bible which is genesis talks about Adam and Eve hiding but they were not hiding in the presence of God but because of the fact that they sinned against God and because of the fact that they there was a shame that they were carrying what were they doing they were hiding behind a tree so what were they doing they were hiding away from the presence of God this morning God has not called the church to hide away from the presence of God but God has called you to hide in his presence somebody say a loud amen for that you see straight contrast to this what what adam and eve did you get to see in psalms 119 if 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 you can give me that word psalms 119 was 114 here's what you see david is telling what is he telling can we read that together just like you do in this church you are my hiding place and my shield i wait for your word you know there is something beautiful about psalms 119 have you do you know what that is you see all these hebrew alphabets like alpha beta gamma and all of that right and and the one of the reasons why king david wrote this according to the tradition they say that king david wanted to teach his young son solomon alphabets and along with that he wanted to teach him spiritual alphabets which is the principles for life amen and one of the things that he is teaching uh, king solomon his young son is the 15th from the 15th alphabet there are a couple of principles uh, i don't know how to pronounce that 15th alphabet of hebrew but anyways in the 15th alphabet of the hebrew he says something like this you are my hiding place and my shield i wait for your word hallelujah 
God is, you know, King David is teaching his young son the importance of hiding in the presence of God, making God his hiding place, making God his shield and making and and the importance of knowing that the importance of tuning into the word of god amen if king david is teaching his young son the importance of hiding in, in the presence of god how much more do you think that you and i need the presence of god in this time amen god is telling that your hiding place is god himself hallelujah the kind of hiding place that god is calling you to is his presence god is not calling the church to hide away from his presence tell your neighbor god is not calling you to hide away from him but god is calling you to hide in him that's right church god is calling us today if you are carrying a shame if you are carrying a sin if you are carrying something that is hindering you from the presence of god i want you to know that he is a loving father somebody said a loud amen for that because he's a loving father he's a kind father he's a gracious god hallelujah he's a good father because of which i remember uh, when i walked in sujo was singing this song i will uh, run to the mountain was it run to the mountain i would climb to the mountain you can't run to the mountain you'll get tired okay so you would climb to the mountain with arms wide open let's say that on the mountain is our god amen remember that even as you are walking up the mountain with your arms wide open there is a father waiting for you amen this morning i want you to know i want to tell the church that god is not holding you back hallelujah if you are holding a sin if you are holding a shame if you are holding anything that is hindering you from the presence of god i want you to know that god is here with his arms wide open so don't stay away in the you know in the next 30 days if you are like man i'm carrying a shame i'm carrying a sin in my life i don't think so i'll be able to come to the presence of god remember that god is here with arms wide open amen god is not calling you to be like adam and eve this morning to hide away from his presence but god is calling you to hide in his presence if you see jesus christ our savior he spent years together hiding before he could come out and do his ministry for how many years three and a half years for how many years he hid 30 years plus that 40 days of fasting without food and without water and because of the fact that he hid away i mean he hid away from the world but he hid in the presence of god is the reason that he was able to go out and create an impact wasn't that amen he was out he was able to go out and he was able to just walk into those streets of israel and the prophecy of isaiah was coming true what was the prophecy the land of zebulun the land of nephtali the way beyond the sea the galilee of the nations you know all of these places are those you know those places that are living under the shadow of death those places that are living in the darkness are going to see great light why why that impact the reason that the impact was there is because Jesus knew the importance of hiding in the presence of God looks like nobody is convinced everybody is sitting very quiet this morning do you do you understand the importance of hiding in the presence of God because of the fact that he hid for 30 long years because he understood the importance of fasting for 40 days we are only fasting for 30 days right huh 31 still good but here's the thing it is it is because of that reason he was able to create an impact hallelujah somebody said a loud hallelujah hallelujah tell jesus jesus i'm going to hide in the season because you hid you chose to hide because he hid he was able to create impact everywhere right he was able to just walk into those streets and there are these deaf people and what did he do he told he told be heard and they began to hear he told the mute you speak and they began to speak he told the paralyzed what did he say pick up your mat and you start walking when what happened they began to walk again all this impact 
just because he understood the importance of hiding in the presence of god hallelujah as a church i believe that god is calling us into a season where we are going to hide amen i believe that in this season god is going to call us to a place i mean god is calling individuals in this church if you are that individual you don't have to lift your hand just tell god yes yes lord it's me lord if you're calling me to hide i want to respond to that amen amen we want, we want to respond to that how many of you have heard about this whale survival anybody whale survival we are named after a church called revival center so you better know <laughs> whale survival um was one of the largest christian revivals that took place in the 20th century 1904 and you know it was one of the most powerful revivals that hit in the 20th century you know what happened bars were empty entertainment places were empty right and all the inside of the churches were full it it had so much impact over the population that people were running into the church Ch- churches were jam packed not just for like one year but years together churches were jam packed amen and also we get to see in that revival that it not only impacted wales which is in england but it also impacted other countries because of what happened in wales but the question is where did it all start you know where it all started there was this little boy called evan roberts right evan roberts was 13 year old how old was he 13 year old working in the mines why was he working in the mines he was he was from a very um, not so well to do family right and god told him you're going to serve me and the, from the day god called him out to serve in the kingdom of god there is one thing that god put in his heart as a burden pray for the revival of wales i was just thinking for a minute man little kid what does he even know about revival <laughs> some of us grown up people we don't even understand what revival is right sometimes you don't really have to know everything but when god does tell you something i think we all we need to do is stay obedient amen this little boy prayed for 13 years 13 years later he was 26 year old when he was 26 year old he the revival hit wales amen like like i told you sometime ago it was so powerful the churches were packed they said it is written like this the church were so packed even the aisles of the church were like full can you imagine something like that in in this church your kids church is full this workstation is full you know the you don't need this gaps <laughs> then right and you, you, let's see the stage is full it's completely full nobody seems excited here come on you know <laughs> if unless you stay excited how can you even see something like that amen first thing to do is respond in excitement saying that lord i want to see something like that happen amen, amen. so it's like a good problem just imagine so people being full everywhere so this is exactly what happened in wales one boy responded with all of his heart saying the lord i want to see revival what how how long did he pray for 13 long years how many of you are willing to pray amen there are churches across bangalore they are praying for last 2 years 3 years continually i know churches like that 30 31 days is nothing come on church we need to i, I think we need to pull up our socks to do go to the next level in the season amen i know we live in a time where people are people I, i don't know how to explain this uh, world that we live in people want everything quick right everything quick i don't think so people really have patience anymore in 21st century we live in a time where there is 15 seconds real videos right you know 2 minutes maggi and you know there was a time if people have to travel from england to india you know how long it used to take it used to take about like 6 months but today it is 9 hours So we live in a time where everything is so quick. You want to tell somebody I like you, you want to tell somebody I want to break up with you, what do you do? All you do is just put a text and hit that button, right? Send, done. But I remember my mom, my dad and mom telling if in those days if they had to send a letter, you know, they had to write it and then they had to go to the post office and they had to, you know, put it in that the red box 
and then I don't know how long. I have to ask them, how long? Any idea? Like weeks later, they would receive that, that message, right? We live in a time where we really don't have that, you know, have that uh, heart to stay still, heart to stay patient. But in a time like this, God is calling the church out and he's telling, can you stay still? God is calling the church out and he's like, can you be patient in a time like this? How many of you are willing to stay patient in a time like this? Amen. Amen. I know that this world is a very busy world. I know that this world is a very uh, fast world. But in the middle of a time like this, God is calling out the church and he's like, can you be patient? Can you stay still and listen to my voice? And he's like, can you... Can you experience my presence in your day-to-day -day life? Hallelujah. How many of you are here telling that, Lord, I want to experience your presence like that. Amen. I've been talking about hiding for so long, right? What comes to your mind when I say the word hiding? Quickly, quickly, quickly. What comes to your mind when I say hiding? Praying, okay. You need to speak loud. I can't hear anything. Somebody said, what's that? Protection, great. Growing. Waiting. You won't believe. I have written down some of these things. So you are right. So let me just tell you what hiding is. Hiding is not necessarily hiding under your bed because you're scared of something, right? But hiding is so much more than that in the, you know, in terms of... Uh, in the Bible, when you read the Bible, when we, when we understand the word hiding, there is so much. Amen? When you say hiding, it means consecrating yourself. Tell your neighbor, consecrating yourself. Consecrating Tell your other neighbor, separating yourself. Separating yourself. You know, hiding can also mean devoting yourself in the presence of God. Or devoting yourself to something that is highly valuable. What is something that is highly valuable for you in this season? Is it a person? Is it an object? What is it? So hiding can means you devoting to something that is highly valuable to you. Hiding can also mean a time of preparation. Somebody said preparation, right? So tell your neighbor, preparation. And hiding can also mean a time of reflecting, a time of examining yourself. This is a season where God is calling some of us to examine ourselves. Amen. This is a season where God is calling some of us out to uh, uh, a, a reflect on things. Hallelujah. God is calling the church to examine. God is calling the church to reflect. And hiding can also mean shutting yourself from other voices. Right? Hiding can also mean shutting yourself from other voices. There are so many voices. How many of you are here this morning saying that? I am tired of this evil one telling that I'm worthless. I'm tired of this enemy telling me that I'm not, I'm not good enough. Amen. You, you, you get to hear all kind of voices. Amen. But regardless of what the enemy is telling, God is telling you in this season, shut yourself from other voices. Tell your neighbor, shut yourself from other voices. Loud, loud, loud. That is what hiding is all about. Amen. There is one more thing that I really want to emphasize on. I, I, I told you all these things. But there are some things that I want to just deeply dive into. Okay. Uh, one of the things that God does when you hide is. He's going to allow victory in your life. Amen. So I'm going to speak about hiding leads to victory. Okay. What does hiding lead to? Victory. Amen. So I want to read a verse for you. Joshua chapter 8. Verses 3 to 4. So Joshua and all the fighting men set out to attack Ai. Joshua chose 30,000 of his best warriors and sent them out at night with these orders. Hide in ambush, close behind the town and be ready for action. Tell your neighbor, hide and be ready for action. Amen. God is telling the church, hide and be ready for action. If you want to see victory in your life, you know what you have to do? You need to hide and be ready for action. Because every time God is about to bring a victory, you know what God will tell them? 
you better hide hey man you didn't hear that right that is why you're too quiet you know when god wants to bring victory he will also ask you to hide in the presence of god hey man so many of you sitting here you have no idea why you haven't had the breakthrough in your life you don't know why you're still fighting that same demon that you fought 5 years ago you still don't know why you haven't had that open door in your life some of you don't know why why is it that it is the will of god that i get that open door in my life it is the will of god that i get this blessing in my life but still i haven't had an open door some of you are still wondering you know why there are times that god would instruct you right and you are completely blind to what god is telling us or deaf to what god is telling us in some season now we understood why you are not able to experience that breakthrough amen every time you want to experience certain breakthrough what do you have to do god will give you certain instructions and and in this season what is that instruction hide and and get ready for action do you know the context of this story over here so what happened over here is previous to this incident what happened is um joshua and his army israel's army they went to fight the men of ai how many of you know the story anybody can you lift your hands if you know the story very less people so i allow to say that so so what happened is joshua and his army they went out to fight the men of ai so the first time when they went to fight the men of ai years what happened they lost and it was the worst possible uh, war because they all lost amen and you know what happened joshua he just went to the lord and he said lord we lost and he tore his clothes he began to throw dust on himself and he was he was he was so upset and you get to see that uh he was kind of like doing a pity party you know what a pity party is lord why did you abandon us you know we came all the way from that place and i was hoping that you're going to give us a victory and we lost god you know sometimes we all do that and then god told joshua you get up be a man get up you know and he told him this is the reason why you lost the battle how many of you know why they lost the battle anybody there was a man called akan if i am not wrong that's how we pronounce his name right so he sinned against god and the presence of god did not work on behalf of israel yeah so when they went to the war here's what happened they lost so bad and the way the bible describes how they died is very brutal it says that these men of why they crushed the head of <laughs> israelites on the rocks they were giant men they were strong men right and then god told joshua this is the reason why you lost and here's what joshua did joshua consecrated himself joshua put things in order and then god gave them in gave them this instruction what is the instruction somebody say loudly hide and be ready for action so so the instruction that god gave them this new instruction is you hide and you be ready for the action so all so israel divided their army into two parts and half of them they hid behind the city of ai and another half of them they went and confronted the men of ai and they said you men of ai you come out we'll see now okay now we'll now we'll do the talking right so the men of ai came out they were furious and they began to you know the men of israel began to challenge them and the idea was to completely lure these people away from the city as far as possible so the men of ai they left their city exposed and they began to run behind the you getting what i'm saying they began to run behind the israeli men they ran so far you know like kilometers away leaving their city exposed and that's when god said i think it's now the time for action somebody say action okay now it was time for action all these hiding men came out and they went in and they attacked the city they put the city on fire and that's how israel won the city and how they conquered the city of ai amen you know what god is trying to tell there are in this season 
God is going to fight your battles in the most creative way possible. Amen. Nobody is receiving that, I guess. Are you receiving that? God is going to fight your battle in the most creative way possible. Wasn't that wasn't that ambush so creative? It wasn't like, you know, you come and i come it wasn't a battle like that this was a very creative battle you know they came to fight and here's what happened and they didn't even know that they left their city exposed so that the israel men can come and destroy their city amen uh, you know i was just noticing something in my house my house um, is a little you know in the in the outskirts of the bangalore and my parents are enjoying their retirement like crazy you know why they made it like a proper kerala house you know they have like five goats and like about like four chickens or five chickens and we got these rabbits and all of these things so when i reached home um, when i reached home i noticed that these eggs that this hen had laid it kind of hatched okay so within the first week itself i saw all these little chicks in action everywhere and you know when i went to when i went close to those chicks you know what happened all of these things literally went and hit behind the mother hens uh, what do you call it? feathers they just found me so foreign and they were like i think it's time to go hiding amen this is a season where god is going to hide you amen you know this is a this is a season where you're going to fight in such a way and the enemy is be, is going to be like from where did the attack even come from <laughs> did the attack come from the left or did the attack come from the right top bottom we have no idea but the attack has come we are finished <laughs> somebody say i can't say you tell your neighbor we are finished right <laughs> so, so so i don't want to make you say that so so the enemy is finished in the season okay you can tell your neighbor, uh, neighbor like this the enemy is finished in the season come on so the enemy is going to have no idea from where the attack is going to come from amen the men of i had no idea from where the attack came from because of the fact they chose to heed to the instructions of the god who said hide and be ready for action amen can you celebrate the lord this morning and say that lord i am willing to hide in this time i am willing to i am willing to be prepared in the season i am going to stay strong in the season hallelujah how many of you are ready in the season that in this season god is going to fight your battles amen you know this men of i they were strong people you should know that this men of i they were not ordinary people like you and me the men of i were gigantic people they were qualified for some crazy battles in the same way your enemy can also be strong your enemy can also be like a giant but it doesn't matter how strong your enemy is it doesn't matter how mighty your enemy is what matters is our our obedience to the instruction in the season somebody say a loud amen for that amen, amen. how many of you willing to obey the instruction of the lord that god is bringing in this season amen. amen like i told you once again i don't know why i just want to just dwell in that same thought again and again the enemy is going to be surprised in the season with the attacks you know in some developed countries uh, uh, you know the governments who has lot of money to spend on their military arsenals and all these things they will invest on one of these fighter jets uh i don't know if i'm pronouncing it right it's called the stealth fighter jets you know what is speciality of this these fighter jets if they fly above certain place that particular enemy will never know who who, who was that which country was that you know it is so silent it is so sophisticated that no amount of their technology will detect that amen so in the same way the men of i you know they were not able to detect from where came this attack amen so once again tell your neighbor god is going to fight our battle in the most creative way in the season i just want to declare this over the church that in the days to come i believe that some of you will come with testimonies amen 
some of you will tell that god fought this battle for me and i am here to testify amen how many of you are willing to say that lord i believe that you fought this battle for me it doesn't matter what kind of battle it is but god is fighting some battles tell your neighbor hiding prepares you for beauty amen Uh, when i was asking what else hiding can do somebody said preparing right you know what hiding can do hiding prepares you for beauty i don't know how many of you know this in many marriages the bride and the groom has this tradition or this custom which has been followed from ages you know what it is the bride and the groom if they they are not supposed to see each other before the ceremony they consider it a bad luck have you come across that i uh, maybe you guys have done that <laughs> but the point is i'm not i don't want to stick around the superstition and the bad luck part because we are the children of god but i i like there is something interesting about this whole concept of not seeing each other before the ceremony you know why the bride is like when i'm going to present myself before the bridegroom i want to look my i want i want to be the at the at my best amen the bride is like i want to look so beautiful that my husband is going to be like wow she looks beautiful amen so god is telling the church today that we need to prepare in so you know such a way that even as he is come and you know god is going to be like my church looks beautiful amen so it is important that in the season that we prepare and we become beautiful amen so you know what the bride will do the bride will go into that it can be a day before obviously so so she would go a day before uh, her that ceremony that marriage she would just go with her bridesmaid and they would start preparing right what would they do they would start preparing the dress she would start preparing her hair she would maybe hire a beautician or one of her friends would be a really good beautician i guess so they would prepare so well that the day that she is going to just walk into that aisle where she is going to get married her husband is going to be like is she the same girl that <laughs> you know sometimes she is going to be like i mean i mean he's going to be like she went in like a normal person and she's coming out like some beauty pageant i don't even know who this is you know i don't know if there will be situations like that i'm just trying to say that she will come out as beautiful as possible amen by the way we men have very limited options Uh, i don't know about you if you are a south indian you give me a coconut oil be it a ordinary day or his wedding he will use that right so along with coconut oil some vaseline lotion vaseline and lotion coconut oil yeah <laughs> so but when it comes to this lady she wants to look herself the best amen she want to look look herself the most beautiful possible amen so i want you to understand church that we are his come on we are his bride and jesus is our bridegroom in the season of hiding here's what god is doing in the season of hiding god is preparing some of us to be the most beautiful people possible amen day after day as you're going to come into this place evening after evening some of you as you're going to tune into that evening live service you know some of you as you're going to prepare your heart you know what you're becoming you're becoming more and more and more beautiful somebody say a loud amen i'm going to be beautiful in this season i want to read a verse for you first thessalonians chapter 5 verses 23 This is the letter that apostle Paul wrote to the church of Thessalonica and here's what he said to them in the final greetings what did he say can we read that together now may the god of peace make you holy in every way and make your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until the lord jesus christ comes again amen Now here's a hint how you should be preparing yourself to become beautiful. You might say man this is old testament. No 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 this is new testament where you need to keep yourself blameless. Somebody say I need to keep myself blameless. 
the bible says you need to keep yourself holy and the bible also says you need to keep your soul your spirit and your body blameless tell your neighbor you're looking beautiful come on tell your neighbor you're looking fine this morning the worship leader was looking so good this morning i <laughs> okay so what i'm trying to say is we are all so well dressed we are all you know we are all looking so fine this morning but as much as we prepare on the outer self to look good the bible is telling you need to also be beautiful with your spirit and with your soul somebody just clap your hands and say the lord i want to be beautiful in the season i want to be that bride who is going to prepare my heart prepare my soul i want to be that bride who is going to prepare my entire self i'm going to be holy in the season amen god is preparing the church to be holy in the season amen this is not some kind of old testament commandment this is a new testament deal that i'm talking about where bible is telling you need to keep yourself holy you need to keep yourself blameless both all three your spirit soul and body because Jesus is coming back again. How many of you know that Jesus Christ is coming back again church? Yes, are you excited that he is coming back again? We are living in a time that is that has become so obvious. I don't I don't know if there can be a you know a crazier time than the time that we are living. Everything is making so obvious that Jesus is coming back again. and when he comes back again he doesn't want to you know see a church that is looking so dull he doesn't want to see a church that is looking so you know unkept he wants to look for a church he's i mean he's coming to look for a church that is beautiful amen, amen. so tell your neighbor tell your neighbor hiding prepares you for once again you all look so tired hiding prepares you for beauty go ahead go ahead go ahead give me a scale a or something you know there is this there is this there is this song which goes like this like a bride waiting for our groom will be a church ready for you you know that song like a bride waiting for our groom will be a church ready for you every heart longing for our king will be a will be a church ready for you and then i think it goes like this Jesus come something like that amen amen so god is calling out the church to be prepared in the season to be ready in the season can i go for one more thing can i go for one more point this morning and then we will pray uh, if if god has something to minister to you we'll go ahead with that tell your neighbor hiding welcomes with hiding welcomes promises <laughs> lift your hands if you have promises that god has given to you We all have promises that God has given to us. Amen. I personally have promises. There are in my Bible back at home, I have a couple of sticky notes and I have written down the amount of promises that God has given to me. Amen. Have you done that? Please go and do that if you have not done that. And you know there are prophetic voices, you know that has been spoken over your life. Men and women of God who has spoken over your life. How many of you know that? there are things that god has spoken over your life and you know what you should be doing in the season you should be recollecting all those promises all those things that god has spoken over your life i don't know if there can be a better time than this to tell god lord you have given me promises and i want those promises come true in my life amen can we read a portion of scripture this morning Acts chapter 1 verses 13 to 14. Can we read that together? They went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. Here are the names of those who were present. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. And then they all met together. Here, here is what we need to focus on. They all met together and they were... constantly united in prayer along with Mary the mother of Jesus several other women and the brothers of Jesus what were they doing so here's the thing 
120 people that's what the bible says 120 people united with one goal with one heart they came together and what were they doing after the ascension of jesus they all came together for something very important they you know they just put a full stop for their day to day activities and they said that i know that i got a lot of things to do in this season of course who knows mary would have told that i got a whole bunch of laundry to wash you know i got this whole bunch of things to do i got to go there do that do this but they all came together and they began to constantly united in prayer along with mary the mother of jesus several other women and the brothers of jesus they began to pray they began to ask god lord there is something that you have given to us they have something that you have told us do you know why they were fasting i'm sorry why they were sitting together and praying why they were waiting because there was a promise there was a promise that god had given to them can we go to the next verse please this is what jesus told them before you before he left do not leave jerusalem until the father sends you the gift he promised as i told you before john baptized you with water and in just few days you will be baptized with the holy spirit but you will receive the power when the holy spirit comes upon you and you will be my witness telling people about me everywhere in jerusalem throughout judea in samaria and to the ends of the world now you know why they were waiting now you know why they were just in one place together because they had a promise from the lord when you are in the season of hiding here's what god is telling hey wait upon those things that i have already spoken over your life there are things that god has spoken to people sitting here 5 years ago 10 years ago 20 years ago maybe the last month or last week here's what god is telling you need to use this time to tell god lord there is something that you have spoken over my life and i want to hold on to that thing in jesus name how many of you want to receive that there are promises that god has spoken over your life in the season amen i think you can do that better come on put your hands together give the lord the best you know what Jesus could have told the disciples he could have told the disciples like this all of you disciples you want to go fishing you carry on you want to go picnic with your family you carry on you know if you want to do anything you carry on i will make sure the father will send the gift anyways he could have told them right but that's not what jesus said but jesus did say that i am going to send you something that the father is you know father so willingly want to send you therefore you have to go and wait and heed to my instruction and my instruction for the season is to hide amen my the god is telling my instruction for the church in the season is to seek his presence more deeper more intimate than ever before somebody say yes jesus i want to be more intimate more passionate i want to come i want to come close to you more and more can we all stand up together can we all stand up together and just say lord in this season if you have told me that you are going to pour if you are that you are going to bring in those blessings over my life if you have told me that you are going to prepare me for beauty in this season if you have told me that you are going to prepare me with strength i am going to receive in the season hallelujah some of you sitting here you are like how can i remind god the promises why should i remind doesn't god know all the promises let me tell you something in psalms it says like this come on some read that together for you are my hiding place you protect me from troubles you surround me with songs of deliverance hallelujah hallelujah god is telling you that he is your hiding place in the season jesus is telling you that he will be your hiding place in the season how many of you are willing to say the lord i want to respond to your word today lord jesus yes jesus yes jesus thank you lord jesus yes jesus some of you need to just respond to this word this morning saying the lord i want to be in your place of hiding 
Jesus knew the importance of hiding that is why as a little boy you know he went into that temple and he forgot about his ma- father and his mother and everybody else all he did was all he wanted to do was just sit and talk about the thing that is close to his heart and that is just know about the will of his father hallelujah the church this morning needs to understand that god is stirring up the heart of people god is stirring up the heart of people come on church come on church respond 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 say that lord say that lord you are my hiding place you are my hiding place jesus yes jesus yes jesus yes jesus you are my hiding place yes jesus this is a season that is god is calling some of you some of you some of you to that intimate place i don't know how many of you want to respond to that god is calling some of you to those intimate places god is telling come jesus is telling come i know that you are carrying some shame i know that you are carrying some sin but there is grace available jesus is telling there is grace available yes jesus yes jesus yes jesus i know lord that you love us this morning thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus love your presence lord you're my hiding place you're my hiding place hide me now under your wings cover me cover me within your mighty hands when the oceans rise and thunders roar I will solve it to you about the storm Father you are king over the floods I will be still and know your God I will be still sense that god is calling you to that place of hiding if you feel that god is calling you in this season to be more intimate to be more close to his presence even if it is one person just come quickly here i believe that we're going to just pray for you even if it is one person just come over here because there is something that god wants to just pour into your life something fresh something new something strong come on church anybody who wants to respond come to the altar right now in jesus name yes jesus when the ocean rise and the this roar i will serve it to you about the storm father you are king over Lord Lord these are your children Lord these are your children These are your sons and daughters Jesus Lord I pray that even they are here with a heart to be hungry to be desperate Lord they are here Lord so that they can experience more of you in this season Lord I pray that you would fill their hunger in Jesus name In Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name